Awesome. And remember, today's first event is sponsored, well, don't remember, but no, by the poet Ben R. Teeter. He is the author of Falling Into All. Inspired by the author's study of spiritual teachings, the words within are meant to be shared to encourage others to look inside themselves and to open a way to understanding beauty and truth so it may spread to all who seek it. Do you have a spiritual artist in your heart? Are you seeking to be closer to a higher sense of self? Open the pages of falling into all to awaken your mind and fall into the waiting divine. Visit Ben at wisewordwind.com and you can buy Falling Into All at Warwick's, and we have a link below. And now it's time to kick off this year's festival. Here to inspire us and get the day started in style is the immensely talented spoken word artist and San Diego Writers Festival poet in residence, Gil Sotu. Gil, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is sorry. <laughs> a poet, playwright, musician, DJ, and performing artist. He's a two-time Grand Slam poetry champion, two-time Raw Performing Artist of the Year, and a three-time TEDx San Diego presenter. Gil is a teaching artist and playwright with the Old Globe Theater and a program director and teaching artist with Intrepid Theater. And he officially opens every San Diego Writers Festival. We're so glad to have him here today. Welcome. Oh, thank, thank you, Gil. You so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been um, three years since we first called you and said, hey, will you do this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was and, like, are these people for real? <laughs> I was listening to the lineup and I, I am honestly so, so humbled that I get to be no. a part of this every year. Like this, no BS. So this is how I truly, truly feel that, you know, uh, the the amount of talent and passion that you put into this um, just to be a, a spoke in that wheel is 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 really something that inspires me and, and makes me feel like I'm connected to something even bigger than myself. So thank oh, you so much. Thank you. Wow. You inspire us. Uh, yeah. And we're going right. to turn it over right. to you to get this whole thing started. All right. All right. right. I hope go. I don't disappoint because this first one, uh, I, <laughs> this one, this one was hard for me. Um, so the theme is what the world needs now. And um, during all the riots uh, um, last summer, I was commissioned to write a piece that I just kept with me uh, since then because it's something that I needed to hear uh, a bunch. So uh, I'm gonna read two poems. One's a little bit longer uh, and then one's like very short, but they both end in love. And, and that's kind of the theme that I want to uh, leave everybody with. And the first one is called In Love. So this is in, in dedication of what we have gone through, especially as African-Americans uh, during that time. <clears throat> in love, I lace my converse, buckle my pants, don a shirt that allows for mobility and give myself one last look in this mirror. I mean, I really need to clean this thing, but right now that doesn't matter. What I really need is one, just one final moment to bathe in this reflection and convince myself that I am what I say I am. No excuses, no take backs or apologies. Say my name <clears throat> in love. I hop in the car, the, the whip, the ride, the hoopty on my bike, on the bus. This is a beautiful day to just go outside and walk. And I turn up my music that makes me feel powerful, beautiful, proud, intelligent, gangster, connected, hella black. I'm saying hella black and I love it. I require my music louder than you might like because I need my head right before I got to clock in, attend this meeting, smile in your condescending face, deal with your microaggressions, address this officer, show my ID, show my receipt, code switch, apply for this loan, apply for this job, meet your family and or stop you from touching my hair. Say my name in love. I invite you to my family's barbecue. I'll play in your league, make you feel welcomed in my church, in my restaurant, on my block, at my spades table, around my children, at my concerts, in my damn house, on my skin, in between my lips and out my mouth. You lay your pillow upon my hospitality, knowing that you have over 400 years of conditioning and an entire police force to cover any nighttime chills you might face. Say my name. In love, I can't stand the way that you look at me sometimes. 
like you're figuring out where in this hour you're going to find another hoop for me to jump through or entertain you with or slam a ball through or slap around my wrist like like I'm okay for the moment, but I better not dare get any more familiar like I need to stay a sitcom away, a football field away, an NBA court, a concert stage, a car stereo, a manager, a publicist, an agent, a supervisor and a neighborhood away. Say my name. I'm asking you to show me the same respect and consideration that you want me to show you you act like i don't see the adoration that you show your pets you will kiss them openly in the mouth but you get uneasy just shaking my hand allowing me in your space if i'm not working it or even seeing me as worth your time i know i know i'm generalizing doesn't that just suck so i think it's time we met <clears throat> but first let's start with names I, 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 me first this time my name is Sandra, George, Trayvon, Ahmad, Sean, Brianna, Natasha. I'll just stop there for a second. I know that's a mouthful, but didn't I hear you say over and over and over again, you were hungry for justice? Good, I'm glad we're in agreement. Then say my name in love. I have been in love with my people since Aretha. No, before that, since Nina, since Fats and Langston, since Marcus, Frederick, and Madam CJ, since my mama taught me that my head should default in the up position, that I am what I say I am, that whips won't stop this love inside of me, that shackles won't stop this love inside of me, that police dogs, nooses, hoods, handcuffs, food deserts, detention centers, defunded schools, community centers, or derogatory jokes behind my my back won't stop this love inside of me. You tried it all. Try me. I know I'm worth every bit the same as you. My life matters. Say it. Say it in love because when we were free, we didn't start our own KKK. We just wanted our God given legal right to sit at the same polished table that you ate from, and we still don't got it. So you say it. Say it in love because if you love your neighbor, then you love me. If you love your teachers and your doctors, if you love your soldiers and your emergency workers, then you have to love me. And you want to know something funny? Despite all that has been done to me for over 400 years, I love you too. Because you're a human being. Because your laugh sounds like my grandfather's. Because you quote Shakespeare almost as good as my uncle. Because you cried with me when Prince died. Because you were holding a sign next to me in this protest. Because you were holding my hand in church. Because you made diversity matter to your company. Because you taught your children our history. And what do you know? It ain't even February. <laughs> in love. I come home at the end of the day knowing now that I might not even be safe there. I kick off the worn Converse, strip the pants and the shirt. I still haven't had time to clean this mirror. It is exhausting trying to play catch up. I can think of nothing better than to do than to wash off the residue of, well, everything. But first I need this mirror. I need to let myself know that I am what I say I am, that I have a name worth saying, love. So that's the first one. Um, the second one, it, it ties into that because I think that we're all trying to do the next right thing. And it feels, sometimes it feels like a sprint trying to get the next right thing done. Sometimes it feels like a marathon. Um, and I, I believe with the Writers Festival, bringing all these good people together, allowing me to, to share my voice in, in all these different voices, um, uh, it's a beautiful thing and it can get really hard and, and very thankless. Uh, imagine like they're not charging anyone to, for all this content. That's so powerful. That's so powerful to not charge someone to help them unleash who they are. So uh, this is called the long, this long, long race. You see, when you set out to make a difference, you are bound by red tape. You are asked to awkwardly run a race where it feels like the only cheering happens when you appear to be failing. When you set out to make a difference, the announcer mispronounces your name. He speaks as if you have already lost, but, but 
each lap you complete, someone smiles in recognition. Another starts running clumsily behind you. Even more are being infused with inspiration without them even realizing it. You are making a difference. Even if each step you attempt does not feel different, even if they inspect and respect your degrees before they do your heart, what you are trying to do for them, the path you are trying to clear, do not mistake the hard road for the one void of value. You are making a difference. How wonderful is it to know that at the end of this race, the trail of light that you leave behind will illuminate a path for those coming after you. That is how decency works. That is how the sun works. That is how love works. That is how love works. Thank you all. I really appreciate your time. Wow, Gil. Every time, every time. <laughs> That was so powerful and so beautiful. And thank you so much for sharing it. I, I hope we can get that far and wide. Um, thank you for bringing us back to what the world needs now. Yeah. Um, it kind of reminded damn. me of um, <clears throat> the Janelle Monet song, Hell You Tom About. You oh, know that yeah. one? Yeah. That, that, it was like such an anthem, that first one. Um, mm. And I love this line that the trail of light that you leave. I have to get your poems in written form because I always try to spit <laughs> yeah. them out fast, but I never yeah. do it. It's coming. It's coming. We, we got to transcribe for sure. I, I, there's a line, and I know we have to move on, but my mama told my head should. I wrote it so fast. You, my head yeah. should always, the de yeah. default position is up. And I was like, yeah. 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 Love That's that. something that's it's, it's true. She always, like, said that to me that, you know, uh, no matter what's going on, like you got it, you have to keep your head up, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Thank you. Okay, you girl. are amazing and we love you so much. <laughs> I have Spread your light. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. I, I tried to wear <laughs> mascara that wouldn't run this time. Oh, so, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go shopping for new mascara. Um, Anastasia. Oh, wait. Folks, support Gil. Please support Gil. Watch more of his amazing spoken word performances on Instagram and Facebook. You can find him at Gil Soto. You know, reach out and say hello if his words touch you today like they've touched us. Absolutely. And now we'd like to welcome Chris Barron and Matt Coyle. We are inspired by the work and dedication to storytelling from these two wonderful authors, both local to San Diego and our vibrant writing community. Thank you for your contribution, gentlemen. It's our honor to present you with San Diego Writer Festival's awards today. Where is Mr. Chris? There he is, the man, the myth, the Yay. legend. Yay. I still remember <laughs> sitting before you saying, you know, we have this idea for a writer's <laughs> festival. What yeah. do you think? Um, so, Chris, I and he was totally to game. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. He was like, let's do it. This is a great idea. Yeah. yeah so many people were like, um, we don't know what you're, you're talking nuts. about. And, here. <laughs> yeah. and then there was Chris who was like, all right. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we're so happy to be giving um, local author Chris Barron the 2021 award for excellence in middle grade writing. Um, just to tell you a little bit about Chris, he's the author of two remarkable middle grade novels written in verse, if you haven't read them, they're gorgeous. So cool. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> His debut was All of Me. It's a body positive book about how one boy deals with fat shaming, read it to my son, it was just life changing. And I love this Los Angeles time um, review. If you've ever felt lost in the world, betrayed by your body or buoyed by a glimmer of hope or the glow of friendship, then all of me could be your story too. <clears throat> but wait, there's more. Um, his <laughs> second book, The Magical Imperfect, is set in the Bay Area against the backdrop of the 1989 World Series and the big earthquake and explores the friendship of two young outcasts. Chris Barron is a professor of English at San Diego City College and the director of the Writing Center. And you can visit him at chris-barron.com. Welcome, Chris. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I'm so honored and humbled to be part of this festival and so proud and, and thankful for you all and, and for the city and for like our region and community. There's such a diverse group of writers and especially middle grade writers that I so admire. And 
Um, I, I, I'm not going to read my long list of things, but I just really wanted to say thank you so much for this honor. Um, I, I like to write books, you know, about the outcasts and the quiet kids and this kind of wonderful age of middle grade. And I think it's probably because I have these middle grade aged kids. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a time, right, that we so connect to this innocence where we're coming from and this kind of wonder looking ahead. And it's an age where kids are really kind of quiet, but have so much going on. So yeah. um, I've always loved middle grade books and I, I'm just so thankful to receive to receive this award. Would you do a reading for us? Yes, I, I thought a lot about what to read. And I just thought on this issue of the way middle grade books can tackle such difficult, challenging topics. I just wanted to read a short poem from All of Me, which starts it all off. And it, it, the title of the chapter, which is really short, is called Who Am I, which is such an appropriate title for all writers, for all poems, all stories everywhere. <laughs> Who am I? The life in my head seems so different from the life outside where I'm so big that everyone stares, but no one sees the real me. My name is Ari Rosenzweig, and this year I'm the newest seventh grader at Mill Valley Middle School. I have sandy brown hair and green eyes like my father's. I'm average height, but I'm a fat kid, and I hate it when people call me names. Even though I'm overweight, I can still do everything everyone else can, ride my bike, play video games, but people just see me as different, only notice who I am on the outside. My mother's an artist who sculpts giants in clay and paints the world on canvas, on murals, and even on clothes. My father sells what she paints. I'm an only child, and sometimes I get lonely, wish for a brother or sister, but I get so much time to myself to do what I like to do, and no one interferes. I make role-playing games. I'm going to be a cryptozoologist. I want to find the creatures out there like Bigfoot that might seem so different, but that belong to this world too. My mother says we're going to spend the summer at the beach. Out in nature, she says. And I like the beach, but I don't like taking off my shirt. And I always have to hike up my pants. And I worry that there's not enough food because I'm always hungry. But more than anything, I think, I want to make a change. And I don't know how. So that's wow. all of the, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Chris. We're, we're so like honored to honor you, honestly, and, and to have you in our community and to know you. And thank you for your support and your words. Do you mind holding up your award so we can take a photograph? No problem. All right, everybody. A virtual way of doing Oh, your award. I mean, the books oh, are good too. <laughs> yes, I do have my award. Hold up Great your words, there. yeah. There we go. Uh, All right, everyone uh, smile. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so Chris. Much. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, congratulations, Chris. Come back every year. Yes, we're going to make you. You don't have a choice. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Next, we are honored to honor another local author. Matt Coyle is the author of the best selling Rick Cahill, Cahill crime series. Matt knew he wanted to be a crime writer at the age of 13 when his father gave him Raymond Chandler's The Simple Art of Murder. <laughs> I love that. His <laughs> books have won the Anthony Ben Franklin Silver Forward Reviews Book of the Year Silver and San Diego Book Awards, and have been nominated for the multiple McCavity, Seamus, and Lefty Awards, as well as named to numerous best of lists. Lost Tomorrows is the sixth book in the Cahill series. That's Matt great. hosts the Crime Corner podcast on the Authors on the Air Global Radio Network, and he lives here in San Diego with his yellow lab, Angus. You can find Matt online, mattcoilbooks.com. We'll drop that link down below. Matt, thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for the honor. Hi. Um, yeah. Well, for Blind Vigil, though, am I, am I, that's what I was going to read from. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, My, yeah, we want to hear whatever you want to read. And absolutely. I just love that your your books, they're so fun. But I love the fact that you that it started with the simple art of murder. That is so wonderful. I'm glad you decided to write about it instead of actually, you know, become a mass murderer. <laughs> well, Kidding. You don't know what I do on my off time. <laughs> that is true. We don't know. Maybe that's why you're such a great writer. All right, let's hear what you got. You mean you want me to read? 
Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. So just a brief right. background. Uh, Rick Kahle is a private investigator. And in the last book, Lost Tomorrows, which you mentioned, he lost his eyesight and now he's trying to find himself um doesn't want to be a private eye anymore probably can't be anyway and his former partner sometime partner Maureen McFarland, has come to his house to talk to him i came here because i could use your help on a case she said my stomach knotted up and walls i couldn't see closed in on me i'm not a pi anymore i took off my sunglasses lost my skill at surveillance i already sworn off private investigating even before i shot even before I was shot. The, the physical damage it did to me was obvious as soon as the sunglasses came off. The emotional scars were harder to see, but just as deep, deeper. War hadn't seen me without my sunglasses before, hadn't seen the pit under my eye, an image I could only feel through my fingers and didn't have to see, disfigured, but better than dead. No gas came from the couch upon seeing me unmasked. So what do you now, Moira said, her tone wasn't mocking or combative, but she made her point. I didn't know what I wanted to do, only what I did. I counted steps inside my house, worked out, and listened to the television. I was living off disability insurance and a mortgage refi. I had minimal marketable skills, XPI, ex-cop, ex-restaurant manager, enough X's to win at tic enough X's to win at tic-tac-toe, but not much else. There was a possible book deal in the offing about what happened in Santa Barbara and before, but I didn't know where to put the truth or where to hide the lies. What I don't wanna do is work cases anymore, I said. I chased my last ghost. I'd finally learned the one truth in Santa Barbara that I'd pursued for 14 years. It hadn't given me closure, just an ending. I couldn't help strangers find truths that might destroy their lives anymore. People had died on my watch, people I cared about and people I killed. Turk Muldoon wants to hire me and I need your help, she said. Shit. Nice. Thanks. Nice. That was that was awesome. <laughs> well, I look forward to reading this next book. And would you mind holding up your award for us so we can take a photo? If I can lift it. It's one of the, <laughs> yeah. coolest, it's one of the coolest awards I've ever gotten and certainly the heaviest. <laughs> nice. I'm putting it against my nice. shoes so you can read it. Yeah, I'm really honored. I want to, I'm really honored. Thank you very much. Totally surprised when I got this, but very happy. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you, man. Thank and, you very uh, much. Somebody in the in the um, chat wrote the hardest working mystery writer out there. Ah. I fully agree. You helped me get through the pandemic. We are some of your biggest fans, and we hope you come back every year. Well, thank you. I'm nice. really honored. And I just wanted to say to somebody in the audience, Juliet, yes, this is a blue shirt. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I believe in Juliet. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Matt. Congratulations, Thank you. Matt. Keep writing. Yeah. All right. So if, if you, the, for those of you in the audience, if you haven't read Matt or Chris's books, please use the link to Warwick's in the Facebook comment field to check them out. Warwick's of La Jolla is far more than a place that sells books. It's a place that brings people together. And we're really fortunate to have Warwick's as a partner. And we're so happy also to have Julie Slavinsky, director of events for Warwick's here with us today. Julie has been in the book business for 16 years, 11 of those at Warwick's, 10 of them as the director of events. She has called San Diego home since 1979. She is not only passionate about reading, she is dedicated to connecting readers and authors, and she has done just that for us here at the festival. For anything books, Julie is our go-to woman. We are so pleased, Julie, to present you with this award, and we thank you so much for your support and everything you've done to help Seriously, make this what Julie, it is today. You've changed our lives yeah. and, and many, yeah. many people's lives around San Diego. And we thank you. And she re she recommends the best books. When you go to Warwick's, yes. there's a page that you can see all the books that the people who work there recommend. And I love all of Julie's picks. Just she's saying. Usually our recommender for our book club. She's the like secret sauce and why the book club is good. Yep. You yep. guys are awesome. Hi, Julie. Hi. <laughs> How are you guys? Good. We're excited to hear about the anticipated books. Take it away. Oh, boy. There are so many good books. But stay with me. Don't go. I hope you guys don't go off screen because I like talking to people. So OK, and okay we'll, stay. we'll stay. So hopefully you yeah. stay yeah. so I can at least like see my big face on the screen. It's like, ah. <laughs> So there's lots totally. of good stuff, and I know that we're, um, and Jennifer, you did mention the page on our website. So definitely, you, there's so, you, finding 
a good book and a recommendation is a really kind of a personal thing. And so yeah. when you connect with somebody that recommends good books to you, and we have lots of booksellers at the store, go look at their pages. Um, I always like to say that any way that there is to get a book, you can get it from Warwick. So supporting <laughs> us and supporting independent bookstores is super important. So many Absolutely. good things coming out this fall. Our buddy Amor Tolls has a new book. Mm. For some news about that. Don Winslow has a new book coming Ooh. out. Ooh, cool cover. Colson Whitehead has a new book. Yes. Oh. Alice Hoffman has a new what? book coming out. What? Okay, so this is going to be packed <laughs> with great books. But what I'm super excited about, I'm going to tell you about one that I'm super excited about. I want to interview Alice. Ooh, yeah, I've heard of this. Oh, I heard about yes. That. Yes. And we're hosting him at USD. So it's a oh, wonderful event. This yeah. book is nothing short of amazing. It's a big, mm. it's a big one. It's a big read. It is so well worth everything you could possibly want. Um, it's it's I can't even describe it because it's so amazing. So it's one of those things that I I'm not the one that's gonna tell you all about a book. I'm gonna say, trust me because <laughs> it's a really good one. I trust when, you. Julie, when is that event? October 1st. Okay. So you can go on the website and get tickets for it. So warworks.com has all the events that you can look at. Couple ones that are out right now that I am loving, Paper Palace. Mm -hmm. which That's our book club pick, isn't it? Uh, maybe, I don't know, Tracy and I are talking. We might, because okay. we're not okay. sure about the author coming. So we're gonna talk, zip. But the one that I, and one of the things that I love to do, and I realized over the pandemic, and I know we're running out of time, but just real quick, lifting up new voices. I love my, I love, don't get me wrong. I love my established authors. There's nothing better than that. But lifting up new voices is something that I personally love to do. The one that I want everyone to go and buy and read is called Abundance. Ooh, okay. okay. By Jacob goes on. This on. book is amazing. It's, and I will tell you a little bit about it. Because each chapter, it's about, it's a, it's called abundance, but it's about what poverty and being incarcerated in coming out of that. Um, each chapter mm. heading is how much money he has in his pocket. Mm. Oh, that's so, brilliant. It's so oh. good. Sometimes he has like, so for this one, he has $16 and 41 cents. Wow. It is, I, I'm telling you, and I want everyone to buy that book. If you don't buy it from my well, don't buy it from us. <laughs> <laughs> buy it at Warwick's, folks. At Warwick's. Support. So the, and the last one I'm going to talk about, this one is, I just finished this, and I know I'm the last, you know, sometimes it's like your favorite, it's like the last thing you read is your favorite, but honest to goodness, mm -hmm. this is absolutely amazing. This is um, coming out in October, What Storm, What Thunder. It's all different characters, all that were affected by the earthquake in Haiti. Oh, wow. And it's their mm. stories and they're all interwoven. It's done beautifully. Brilliantly. It's a beautiful book. So some of these beautiful. are on my page. Some of them I need to update my page. I was just looking at it. So we need to uh, mm. I will update that. But you guys, this award is so awesome. And I am, I'm just so thankful that I have the same award that like James Patterson and <laughs> Matt right? Boyle. And I mean, I'm going to have on my shelf what they have on their shelf. So <laughs> That's right. Well, hold it up and smile so we can get a photo, oh, okay? okay. <laughs> Here we go. Perfect. Yay! That was perfect. Thank, thank you, you so right? much. Well, Julie, thank you. For all you, thank you. Until next year. Until, Until next year. year. <laughs>